today I'm going to show you guys five of my top groundwork exercises. These can be for horses that are green, just starting under saddle, mustangs you've just gentled and haltered, or even more advanced horses that just need a refresher on the ground to understand how to isolate their body parts and communicate a little bit clearer. You ready to get started? I'm going to show you how to ask for these exercises, what to look for, and why they're important. It's important to note that none of these are used for desensitization and they're not just for horses that want to be geared towards liberty because I know I focus a lot on that. They're really for any horse that wants to work either on body control, get ready to ride under saddle, need a little bit of help under saddle because they're getting stuck with things, or they can be used for liberty work. When I do groundwork, I tend to use a dressage whip or a carriage whip. Now the carriage whip has a tail on it, it's a little bit longer, and the dressage whip is just a stick, longer than a crop, shorter than a lunge whip, and the reason I use these is because they're extensions of my arms so I can communicate better. Go ahead, get that fly. So I can communicate a little bit better with the hip of the horse, the shoulder, the ribs, all kind of at the same time or individually and separately without really having to confuse my energy by moving around a lot. I can target one specific area. So you're going to see me using the dressage whip a lot. But if you have a bigger horse, a taller horse, and you need a little bit more energy for any of these, you're going to use a carriage whip because you can create more energy through the tail end of it. Another thing to mention really quick is that we're working in a rope halter right now with a fairly long line. You do want to make sure that your line is folded up, that way you can hold the center of it. You don't want this getting wrapped around your hand for any reason and your horse spooking or moving away really fast and kind of jerking you around. It's a really big safety concern so make sure that rope is folded and never wrapped. And you are able to do this in a flat nylon halter or a leather halter, but I do recommend for a horse just getting started on these or a horse that's a little bit pushier and doesn't really understand boundaries and how to break down their body yet, how to understand when we communicate to them. I recommend this rope halter because you can speak a little bit more specifically to the certain parts of the horse and without nagging them, you can get a more direct answer. I know I said this video didn't talk about desensitization because that's a whole other topic of how to work on it standstill and in motion and the perks of it and the downfalls of how it can be misused, but I do want to talk about how to work them with the whip because we are going to be using it, so make sure you're able to rub your horse on both sides, all over their body, down their legs with the whip, and if they aren't comfortable, they're going to be moving around. What you do when that happens is you keep the whip on them, rubbing them, try to move along with them until they stand still, and then you take that whip away. Now the other reason you might want to be rubbing them with the whip is for anticipation. Now that can be either before they do the maneuver or after they do the maneuver when they're not able to rest. So if my horse is moving around before I'm even ready to ask him to do something, I'm going to rub him with the whip, go into asking, and then release. Now if my horse is anticipating the release and being done with it, once we finish the maneuver, and he keeps moving after the release, I'm going to keep rubbing him until he stays still and then take the whip away. So that's a good way to kind of deal with anticipation from your horse. You'll notice that everything I'm doing today is using pressure and release and I want to make sure that you really understand, you've heard it a million times, the horse learns from the release not the pressure. So when they do that correct maneuver and when they take a step in the correct direction, I really want you just to exhale and relax. Now think about it like this, if you're talking to a very young child and they're just learning math and you ask them, what's two plus two? And they say five. You're going to say, no, try again. Or you're going to say, mm, not quite, but you're close. You're not going to say, no, that's completely wrong, you're awful, come on, come on, think harder, think harder. You're not going to get super aggressive and assertive with them. So when your horse is trying to give you an answer, even though they don't necessarily understand what it is yet, but if they're trying and they're giving you a couple different options and solutions and they're thinking, you're not going to up your pressure. You're not going to be like, come on, work harder. That's not going to help them think. That's going to make them more panicked and give them more anxiety. 
So if your horse is trying to give you an answer, don't release because no, it's not the correct answer. Just kind of stay steady with that pressure, okay? You're not gonna up it and start yelling at them, but you're gonna stay steady, not release, and just say, come on, try a little bit more. You're so close, you almost got it. And now let's get started on those five exercises. The first exercise I do with all horses, regardless of how far along they are in their training, is ask for the hindquarter yield. Now my goal is always to get these cues so light that I can communicate with my horse just with my body language. So we're always going to start by asking with the very lightest cue possible. For me, that's just going to be my body placement and my energy. So right now you can see I'm tipping towards that hip, I'm staring at it, I'm putting all of my energy towards it. If my horse isn't responding, please bear with him. We're kind of in muggy Texas right now and the mosquitoes are attacking him. But if my horse isn't responding at all from me putting my energy right here, then I'm going to start waving my whip. This is my step two. If he doesn't respond to this, I might use a vocal cue and release. Now what we're looking for is that front end to stay still and that hind end to move around. If he didn't move from my third cue, which was the clucking, then I'm going to go ahead and tap that hip and even walk towards it if necessary. So here I go again. I'm going to direct my energy at that hip. I'm going to wave the whip. He gave me a step. I'm going to release. Now when I release, I want you guys to think about exhaling and putting all of your energy to the ground. I talk about energy a lot with these horses because that's my main form of communication. It's all varying levels. If I come up here, I really want a lot from them or they're kind of getting dull to my cues and I need to get to that point. If I'm down here, I'm asking really soft at first. So again, tip around to that hip, wave the whip. If I get no response, pluck, and then tap if needed. Now the tap is gonna be pretty light at first. It's just gonna be really light like this on your horse. And then again, of course, increase if necessary. So when you start doing all of these exercises, you just want one step at the beginning, okay? So right here, I'm leaning, I'm waving, I'm clucking, and then I release. See how that front end stayed pretty still and the hind end crossed over? So again, if my horse is advancing in this, I'm gonna ask for more steps. So what that looks like is lean, Raise the whip, pluck, and keep asking. Good, and release. Now I asked for quite a few steps right there and that's because he wasn't giving me that full crossover and kind of getting a little lazy about it. So what I did was I brought my energy up. As soon as he gave me that reaction, I released and relaxed. So again, I'm gonna show you what I'm looking for and how I'm asking. Look at that hip, wave the whip, pluck, and tap. Now one thing I'm not mentioning here is the lead rope. I'm trying not to pull on the lead rope too much. I don't really wanna to have to rely on all of my tools for everything. I want that body language to come first. Now of course, if necessary, I'll tip that nose around with the lead rope and have him kind of follow around. The reason this is important is because when you're on your horse and you need to disengage them under saddle if they're moving around, the very first thing you want to look at is that hip. This kind of relates to that one rein stop. You're looking for them to disengage and move their hip around. If the hip is a really big part of being able to get your horse to stop and stand still and wait. The next exercise is going to be moving the shoulder. So for this, if your horse hasn't done this before, you're going to take the cheek piece of the halter, you're going to tip your horse's nose in the direction you want them to go, and you're going to add that pressure to the shoulder. What you're looking for is the exact opposite of what we were just doing. You want the front end to cross and the hind end to stay still. So again, tip the nose the direction you want and add that energy to the shoulder. A really important tip here is to make sure you walk on the circle you want your horse to pivot on. And what I mean by that is if my horse starts walking forward, I let him just push me forward. We're not getting that crossover and he's just walking out of it. So I want to make sure that I'm pretty firm. Good. In asking by keeping myself on the track, I want him to stay on. See how we kind of went out of frame there? That's because I was letting him push me forward. So if I'm able to really direct that nose around, I'm able to help him out and isolate that shoulder. So you see kind of how I ask for it. I stand with my chest facing the cheek and my whip is up here with the tip of it being able to touch the shoulder. Okay, just like the hindquarters, when I want to release, exhale everything. This exercise is great for horses that are really pushy and kind of bulge into you. You can teach them pretty easily that if you tap that shoulder, you want it to move away from you. Okay, or if you even think about putting energy on that shoulder, you want it to step away. Even just that slight step was a reaction to my energy coming at him. I'm going to demonstrate the other direction really quick and kind of your end goal for this. 
I want to just be able to come here with my energy and body language and ask him to step around. Good boy. Your third exercise is going to be the backup. Now there's a few ways to train this and I believe in having a horse understand how to back up from a bu bunch of different ways, whether it be pressure on the chest, the halter, the bridge of the nose, quite a few ways to teach them to back up. I like them having a whip cue to respond, but we're gonna start just with the most basic one. So instead of holding a steady pressure when you ask your horse to back up, I want you to think about pulsing or bumping. A steady pressure is almost asking them to halt and to stand still. By pulsing and bumping, it gives them something to move off of. You'll notice my body position is a little bit off-centered. I'm to one side of him. I have my hand on the lead rope, and I'm going to walk towards him. And my chest is kind of leaned forward, pointing at his. And as soon as he back up, backs up, I'm going to release and drop my energy. Now, if your horse is really sticky, we're going to show them how to back up with the whip. So we're going to do our very first cue, which is going to be bumping on this halter. And then we'll come in with the second cue, which is tapping the chest. As soon as they back up, release. Even if you're just getting one step right now. Eventually, you're going to want this to be even lighter, where you can just walk towards your horse and ask them to back up just from your body energy. That's why it's so important to always think about kind of directing your chest your head, wherever your vision is going towards that body part you want to move. And in this case, it's the chest because in order for the chest to move backwards, all of the legs have to pick up and move backwards too. I'll show you guys this basic backup one more time. I'm gonna stand near my horse and I'm going to bump on the halter. And it's more like opening and closing your fingers, not super aggressive at your horse. Now over time with all of these exercises, you're gonna wanna raise your expectations, just like I was talking about in the hindquarter yield where at the beginning you just want one or two steps just to teach them how to be soft to that pressure. Eventually you wanna get more than that. Now my next favorite groundwork exercise is teaching the horse how to send. This can be a little bit confusing in relation to lunging because sometimes people do send their horses out to lunge. Lunging as a groundwork exercise can be really misused. I can't tell you the last time I lunged lengths. Now that's not to say it's an awful groundwork exercise, it's just not always understood correctly. You don't want to use lunging as a way to make your horse go in constant repetitive circles, kind of mindlessly, walk, trot, canter, great, change directions, walk, trot, canter, awesome, they got their energy out, let's get on. You want to use it more as a way to unlock the feet and get them thinking. So a few examples of how to use lunging in a productive way would be multiple transitions, pretty fast paced. So I ask for the walk for a quarter of the circle, then we go into the trot, then I go back down to the walk, then I maybe ask for the canter. So it's a constant change of gait. The other thing would be getting them to change directions constantly. Again, that's responding to your body language. Rather than just constantly pushing them forward and adding that energy behind, they have to think about where I'm placing my body. So that's in relation to lunging, and that's why I don't always necessarily recommend lunging as my number one groundwork exercise. All of these are more stationary things. Sending focuses more on body position and the horse responding to your body language. So I'm gonna show you really quick where I'm gonna stand. You can either hold the excess lead rope in your back hand or you can hold it all in this front hand. What I'm gonna do is point the direction I want my horse to go. So in this case, it would be this way. And with my other hand, I'm gonna put it behind him, kind of like I'm in a triangle. This is behind the drive line. So I'm gonna say this way, move the whip, pluck, and then release by dropping my energy down. Now, if I wanted to ask my horse to do this from a different direction, like if he was face onto me, again, I'm gonna point out, and release. Now you may notice something my horse is doing is moving his shoulder out of the way when I push him out. And that's perfect because I'm adding that energy and that bubble that I want him to move out of. The reason he's doing that is because we worked on moving the shoulders. So again, I'm gonna point my hand, add the energy from behind, and ask him to go out and release my energy. Now, if I wanna send as in getting my horse to load onto a trailer or go in between an obstacle, what I'm gonna do is point, drive from behind, let him get moving for a step or two, and then I'm gonna walk with him. If I want my horse to send out, and I'm gonna change it up on him, I'm gonna send him this way, point the direction I want him to go, add energy, let him move a step or two, and then walk with him. Now, if I want him to change direction here, I'm gonna go back to that very first exercise. I'm gonna say, hey, let's look at the hip. Get that hip to yield change hands and send him out this way. Good, as soon as my horse goes out, I'm gonna relax my arm that's sending him just a little bit. 
and release, drop all of my energy, or I could yield the hindquarters. Now the last groundwork exercise is even more laid back than those. For this, it's the pole release. And you can tell my horse already is holding his pole pretty low right now, so I'm gonna get him to lift his head up. What I'm gonna do with my thumb and my pointer finger is come right to the pole, which is in between the ears, maybe like an inch or two back, and I'm gonna squeeze. As soon as my horse drops his head, I'm gonna release that pressure. Now the reason this is really important is because it's kind of what I call an artificial relaxation technique. I'm able to get my horse to stretch his top line, relax his neck, and think about calming down a little bit. It can release some endorphins when they stretch that top line out, when the pole is lower than the withers. So if I can help my horse get into that position, I'm able to relax him. Now you might be thinking, how is this even groundwork? Well, I'm on the ground and I'm still working with my horse. So really, if you take the word groundwork and you put it into two, groundwork, anything you do with your horse on the ground is groundwork. And why is this in one of my top five exercises? Because I find relaxation with these horses is really important. A lot of the times we're so busy trying to just get that desired reaction, we forget about the release. When we forget about the release, we're ignoring our horse's anxiety. So when we give them the release, they understand they're doing the correct maneuver, but we want to pay attention to if they're doing it relaxed. Just because we're getting the correct maneuver doesn't mean we're getting it with relaxation. And for me, that's really important when I'm working with horses. I want to make sure that they're comfortable and confident and really relaxed when they're working around me. I don't want to be creating anxiety within them. I'm wanting to give them tools to subside their anxiety. So for me, this pull release really helps me have a quiet moment with my horse and teach them to put their head to the ground. And those of you that have watched my other how-to videos, you may understand that this is the first step of the lay down, which of course is something that needs a lot of relaxation to happen. Again, squeeze, release, squeeze, release. If your horse is really getting stuck with the hand cue, you're going to help them out a little bit with the lead rope. And what that would look like is you're first going to ask with your original cue up here, and then if needed, you're going to get them to give with the lead rope. This is also useful just to teach them how to give to pressure in another way. Hopefully these five groundwork exercises were pretty useful for you. I know they're really basic. If you think about it, the advanced stuff is really just a combination of all of the basics being done really softly and in a sequence. I'd really like to talk about positive reinforcement one time and show you how to incorporate it into everything you're doing with your horse. But for right now, this one just focuses on pressure and release and how to effectively use that. I do believe there is a good importance in using both negative and positive reinforcement and I think horses should know how to respond to both. I really think positive reinforcement can help engage a horse, but I think negative is definitely something they need to know and how they kind of already communicate with themselves and each other in the wild. Hopefully these five groundwork exercises really help you communicate a little bit better with your horse and they kind of clearly outline what to do, what to look for from your horse, and how they're important. Thank you for joining me in links on this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.